expected to take anything too literally for the next hour. At ten o'clock, Phil Cole will give us his impressions of life, but first, alas, it's Smith and Jones. Bernstein! <laughs> Bernstein! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting out tonight. Oh, congratulations. I'm escaping. Oh, escaping. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know under the washstand, there's an air vent, right? Oh, right, yeah. yeah. It leads straight down to the air shaft, which leads to the sewers and then out to sea. Oh, to the sea. Yeah. I made myself a life raft oh. out of a bin liner and a lavatory seat. <laughs> you know, you was good with your hands like that. That's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, yeah. I need your help, Bergstein. Yeah. When I take the real air vent off, it makes a lot of noise, right? Oh, yeah. So I want you to make a lot of noise. What, me to make a noise? Yeah, yeah, like a big distraction. So what sort of noise do you Doesn't want? matter what okay. sort of noise, just a loud distraction, okay? Okay, I got okay. it. Okay, okay. Ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm three. Ready. ready. Two. One. Ladies and gentlemen, Mel and I have a little announcement to make. Um, <laughs> we've been together now for, um, ooh, what, uh, two and a half years? Is it really? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half years. Obviously, it hasn't always been a bed of roses. <laughs> no, no, it hasn't. No. <laughs> but we have sort of got used to each other's ways, and um, we've actually decided to, um, to get married. <laughs> In sickness and in health, to have and to hold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Obviously, we we wanted you, our audience, to be the uh, the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> and we should add, this is not a decision that was taken lightly. But we are both practicing Christians, and we um, seen the ring. Is that lovely? Yeah. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we did. Um, We did, we did want God to sanctify our, our comedy partnership. That's right. <laughs> and we're, we're very, very fortunate. We've we found a sympathetic, comical vicar, uh, the, <laughs> the Reverend Jacko, uh, <laughs> who has agreed, which is very, very important to us, he's actually um, agreed to perform the ceremony in a church. And in a red nose. Nice touch, that, I think, I think so. <laughs> Obviously, I mean, we know that there's going to be an enormous sort of outcry in the, in the popular gutter press, but uh, it seems incredible to us because, in a way, I mean, we're hardly the first... Uh, First comic duo to get married. I mean, certainly not, no. I mean, uh, Gracie Allen and George Burns, for right. example. <laughs> Keith Harris and Orville the Duck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't aware that they had. Well, when I, no, I, they I kept it quiet. Well, right. well, that's their prerogative, isn't it? I mean, I, I, you see, here we are both actually. Well, we're male, aren't we? Yeah. But so what? I mean, I, I, I happen to think there are some things more important to a proper relationship than sex. Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, well, for us, marriage was the obvious next stage. We spend an enormous amount of time together. We know each other's little ways. But, uh, <laughs> Most of all, we row continuously in public. Right. So what more could a modern marriage want? Exactly. half an hour ago on a drink driving charge. <laughs> what on earth have you done to him? Ooh, you asked me to get a blood sample, Sarge. <laughs> a run-down area of South London. This man is living here alone. No prospect of a job, no money. But he's happy. No longer does he have to suffer the torments of an uncaring, repressive regime. 
He is now free to express himself and his art. For three months ago, this man defected from Barnsley. <laughs> there, groups of us, you know, we used to get together, dissidents, if you like, we used to get together, we'd have to hide away secretly in back rooms, you know, and, and be southern <laughs> and drink Campari. <laughs> it was a taste of freedom. Oh. C could I have it in a straight glass, do you think? <laughs> Each year, thousands of men and women like Ted try to cross the well-guarded border to the free south. Some make it. Others don't. It's the lies they tell you. The brainwashing. You know, the best fish and chips in the world are from Harry Ramsden in Leeds. Mike Harding is a comedian. I mean, what can a lad from north do down here? Yeah, yeah. All right, David. Yeah, ta-da, look. He'll be all right. Because, oh, no, we're real people. We're real, real, real people from up north. Yeah, well, I think if he wants to succeed down south, he should bang his fist on the table and shout that northerners are real people. <laughs> It never did Colin Welland any harm. <laughs> he laughed hysterically. But no, I mean, has he thought of getting a blonde wig and a pair of spectacles and speaking in a high-pitched northern drawl? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Didn't do Alan Bennett any harm, did it? No, I mean, he needs a gimmick, doesn't he? Why doesn't he try a painted, naked young men jumping in and out of swimming pools? <laughs> Oh, no. No, I do that, don't I? <laughs> no, I'm doing the blue bit now, love. But it's not always that easy. One of Ted's fellow defectors, Amos Blowthorpe, a second-year student at the Royal School of Ballet, has already decided to go back. He's had enough. So, Amos, what went wrong? What went wrong? I don't know, I don't I feel really sorry about the old business, you know what I mean? Mm. God, that curry was a mistake. I mean, I ask you, I ask you, I mean, look at this, look at this, look, 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 look at that thing there. I mean, what has Rudolf Nuri have got that I haven't got? Eh, eh, eh? Apart from three foot of rubber tubing. <laughs> <laughs> But things are looking up for Ted. He has an audition for a part in Alan Bleasdale's latest epic about northern hardship. When the boat comes in from the black stuff. Pet. Can you hear me, mother? Next. Ted Arkwright. OK, Ted, in your own time. Northerners are real people. Real people with real emotion. Buy buy. Oh, he's marvellous. He's got perfect flat vowels, good cloth cap. Reminds me very much of the young Colin Willard. He's got the part. Part four in our course, The History of the Press. Tomorrow on the Open University, we'll be taking a look at some rabbits shower. <laughs> Makes you proud. Proud to be English. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Forty years ago, a German succumbed to the superior forces of a stout English yeomanry. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah, you're telling me. <laughs> Jeff first went in there, he bashed that first goal in, and he bashed the second goal in, no. and everybody... What? No, no, I'm not talking about the World Cup. Oh, right, no, right. <laughs> I'm talking about the World War. Oh, right. The Second World the War. Second World War, right, yeah. You remember the Second World yeah, War? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. All the Nazis. Yeah. Remember the Nazis? <laughs> uh, oh, there was Hitler. Yeah, Adolf, yeah. <laughs> 
Goering? Yeah. Herman? Yeah. Yeah. Gobbles? Him as well. It was him as well, yeah. And on, on our side, we had, uh, what, John Mills, David Niven and Noel Coward, didn't That's we? That's right. Yeah. Really a fair contest. I've seen all that on the television, that, that war, right, with the, with the way they, the way it went. They called that the, that was the war that would end all wars, wouldn't it, that one? No. <laughs> no, it wasn't, no. No, that was the First World War. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, how, how come then there was another war after that, then, if that was a war? Well, I, d I don't know. Oh, right, yeah. I mean, I could hardly have called it the war to end all wars, except for the one we're going to have next. <laughs> I mean, when I mean, you couldn't fit it on the front of the history no, books, no, could you? No, no, no. <laughs> but weren't you, uh, weren't you just a little bit proud? Yeah. VE Day? Yeah, right, yeah. What's that then? <laughs> VE Day commemorates the winning of the war. Oh, right. VE. Yeah, what is that? That V is. Well, V obviously for, for victory. Victory, right. And, and e, e is for. Uh, <laughs> England. Oh, right. <laughs> In, in, in England, right? Victory for England. And, like, if Germany had won, right, it'd be the uh, VG Day. VG right? Day. VG Day. Right. <laughs> it's a good job Denmark didn't win it. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mind you, mind you, it was our finest oh, hour. You're telling me. It was our yeah. finest hour. Good old, good old winning. Yeah. Eh? She was a wonderful woman, wasn't she? <laughs> no, we've got a she, it's a he, isn't it? Oh, right. Winston. Oh, right. What, you mean the old uh, West Indian who works down there? In... <laughs> Winston Churchill. Oh, oh yeah, The right, greatest yeah. living Englishman. Yeah, yeah. Where is he now, then? Dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he's obviously the greatest dead Englishman. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, during those dark days, it was Winnie. Winnie what pulled us through. Yeah. Winnie and, of course, dear old Vera Lynn. Vera Lynn, yeah. Yeah. Right. I remember, I remember him on the radio, that. <laughs> that, old, uh, that Willie Wright, he used to do that big speech, didn't he? That's to everybody. Right. That's he'd, right. say, he'd say, everybody don't worry, right? Cos never has so few been owed by so many for so much. <laughs> it's inspiring, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Vera, bless yeah. her. Yeah. Sing one of those marvellous songs. Sure, they were marvellous songs, weren't they? Yeah, well, they were great songs. Yeah, but well, there'll be bluebirds over them old white cliffs uh, and over, yeah. We'll meet again. Run away, run away. Hitler has only got marvellous, marvellous. What an old trooper yeah, Vera I'll tell you was. That, that's what she is, isn't she? She's an old trooper. Isn't she, she still is to this day. She is a great, great trooper. Yeah. I hate old troopers, don't you? So, yeah. <laughs> but it was that. It was that. Yeah. Elders together. It was that it's spirit. spirit. Yeah. It was a spirit. Right. It was a community right. spirit, wasn't yeah. it? Do you remember? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not like nowadays. No. What no. is going on? No, what is right. going on nowadays? Yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah. But in those days, yeah, you could you could you walk could. your girlfriend home yeah. after the blackout. Yeah. Yeah, if you could find your way, yeah. If you could find your way. <laughs> and you didn't have to be worried about whether you was going to no, be mugged. Right. You didn't have to be worried about who you was going to be beaten no, up. Right. You know, the streets yeah. were safe. Yeah, all you had to worry about was a bloody great bomb landing on your head. <laughs> <laughs> Here she is, the lovely Connie Batchelor.
Hello? Hello? <laughs> it's Barry, isn't it? Hello, I'm, I'm, I'm Brian. You, you don't know me, I'm, I'm, your, I'm your new prison visitor. <laughs> so I've, I've, I've sort of come to visit you here in, uh, in, the, uh, in the slammer. <laughs> Yes. Oh, there they are. Forgotten. They, they've abolished hanging round here, haven't they? <laughs> Still, I've, 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 I've never done this before. That's all right. No, no, no. You know, I was sitting at home as you do, you know. Well, as I do, anyway. <laughs> you know, I, I thought, you know, Brian, you shouldn't, shouldn't be sitting around. You should, you, should, you should get yourself down the pokey and cheer up some old lag. <laughs> so, so here I am. <laughs> well, you've got to get out, haven't you, from time to time, you know? Otherwise, you feel claustrophobic, don't you, with the, with the four walls, sort of... <laughs> like, like um... <clears> that. <throat> they, they, they told me that you're, um... You're doing a life sentence. That's right, yeah. Mm. It's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> What did you do then? <laughs> Murder. <laughs> Murder. <laughs> the big one. <laughs> I, I can't say that I've ever, I've ever met a murderer before. What a shame. <laughs> Still. <laughs> it takes all sorts, doesn't it? I mean, live and let live, that's my motto. <laughs> Have you been here long? Long enough. Oh, yeah. And how are you enjoying yourself? Well, I mean, I mean... Are, are you comfortable? Are you, are you getting out much? No, obviously not. No, no. Well, I hope not, anyway. Still, the, the way I see it, you know, stone walls do not a prison make. <laughs> The bars sort of help, though, don't they? They give the various... <laughs> and, the, and the warder standing there. So... so uh, <laughs> tell me, tell me, tell me, uh, Barry, are you, um... Are you getting enough snout? Yeah. <laughs> that, that's tobacco? Yeah, I know. That, that's, what, that's what criminals call tobacco. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, you see, see, over there, the warder, screw, <laughs> you, lifer. So, snout, screw, Lifer. Brett. <laughs> I beg your pardon? I said... Brett. Oh, yeah. Oh, what well, you mean that's what you criminals call us prison visitors? Yes, Brett. <laughs> well, I'm proud to be a Brett. I don't mind you. It's marvellous in here, isn't it? I mean, in ways, it's just like the films, isn't it? <laughs> I saw a wonderful film the other day with that, with that Roger Daltrey in it. And he was playing a sort of crazed, psychopathic killer. Something like yourself, you see. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a new film. It was released about five years ago. Unlike yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you didn't see that film at all, then? Well, it's a, good, it's a good job too, really, one way or another. Might have given you ideas, cos he escaped. <laughs> so, what, what, was, what was the last film you saw, then, around here? Gone with the Wind. <laughs> blimey! Blimey, you, um, You have been here a long time, haven't you? I saw it on the video. Oh, right! On the video? In the games room. On the video in the games room? <laughs> blimey! <laughs> It's a bit of a holiday camp in here, isn't it? <laughs> Video, going, oh, you'll be telling me next, you've got a jacuzzi in your cell. Well, I've got a bucket. Oh, right. <laughs> what I share with four others. Oh, with four others, yeah. Well, nice for the company, isn't it? <laughs> I expect you get up to some fun when the lights are out. <laughs> you what? Well, you mean, you know, midnight feasts, pillow fights. No. <laughs> Murder in the dark. <laughs> Time, I better, I better be on my way. <laughs> Time flies in here, doesn't it? <laughs> I've got things to do, people to see, <laughs> places to go. Unlike you, of course. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. You'll be here next week, will you? I'll be here for another ten years. Well, be good. And if, and if you can't be good, don't get caught. <laughs> <laughs>
bit late for that, innit? <laughs> they were women with a difference. They'd done a bank and run to Rio. How much longer do we have to stay in this bleeding dump? Oh, shut up, you stupid cow, and have a cigar. They were women with a mission to get even. I could really murder a point. Yeah, come on. Let's get that rubber, pick up a couple of tarps. They were women in control. You're going nowhere. <laughs> they were women with a difference. They were, in fact, men. Says who, Dolly? Says me. <laughs> Useless Films present Widows. Four women who rob banks, beat each other up and wave guns about. Widows from the people who brought you Minder, the Sweeney, Fox and Out. Exactly the same again, only with women in it. Right, so when the baby came along, right, we decided that as Margaret had her career and everything, we would simply swap roles, and that's sort of what we did. You know, every morning she goes off to the office with her briefcase while I stay in bed till 10, watch Australian soap operas all afternoon and stick something in the microwave for supper. <laughs> I'm getting scurvy. <laughs> We're all getting scurvy. It's because I haven't had any oranges for ten months. <laughs> Look, please. Doesn't have to be an orange. Could be a nice apple. Nice, big, crisp, juicy right, apple. that's it. <laughs> you mention oranges one more time, I'm going to report you to the captain, all right? Well, we're going to take that attitude. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm going to take that attitude. I've, I've had enough of it. I'm telling right, you. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. What do you mean, what am I doing? Keeping watch, that's what I'm doing. What do you think I'm doing? Well, what are you keeping watch for? Well, I don't know. Pirates. Pirates? Yes! But well, pirates aren't going to bother with us, are they? We haven't got anything bugger all worth stealing on this ship. <laughs> we've got no gold, we've got no jewellery. Not even so much as an orange. Right. <laughs> captain! 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 captain. Mr. Bob, sir! Hey, seaman Hobbs here, sir. He keeps talking about oranges. Fruit? Hey! Seaman Hobbs! Talking about fruit at sea carries severe penalties. Do you realise for what you've just done, I could have you peeled, cut into segments and served with cream? <laughs> or I might even take the rind off oh, and... Excuse me, Captain, I'm terribly sorry. Yes, Mr. Banana? <laughs> well, I, I think you're talking about fruit now, sir. Mutiny, Mr. Captain, 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 sir, Captain! What is it, Lieutenant? Look what I've made, sir. What is it? It's a pineapple, sir. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, man. Pull yourself together. That's not a pineapple, it's a Logan Berry. No, no, sir, it's a pineapple. Look, you can tell by the number of masts it's got. It's a grapefruit. It's a grapefruit. I tell you, you'll go mad, mad, I tell you. If all this talk about fruit, 40 weeks we've been at sea, 40 weeks and 40 weeks more to go. We'll never see Plymouth again unless you put each fruit out of your mind. You think of something else, for God's friend's sake. Just clear your mind. Think of something else you'd like. I got it. A woman. Steady, <laughs> mate. With gigantic great melons. Yeah! Just five years ago, on this very day, <laughs> in this very pub, a decision was made that would change your life and my life. Or did it? Because it was on this day in March 1980 that this bloke over here bought this bloke over here 43 of these. <laughs> the very next day, this bloke, a high-ranking BBC executive, gave this bloke, my agent, three million pounds so that this bloke could make a television programme about the first thing that came into my head. <laughs> what, did, what did your father, then, do in the war? In the war? <clears throat> yeah. Well, what my father did was very, uh, very hush-hush. Well, he worked in the library. <laughs> no, no, no. No, he was, uh, he was in intelligence.
<laughs> yeah, well, I suppose somebody had to be an intelligence in that one way or another. Yeah. Yeah, well, what did your father no, what do? Then? What did your father, father do? My father, well, I'm afraid he had a terrible war. Did he? A terrible, terrible, terrible war. Oh. What happened? He was killed on the first day. <laughs> Well, my well, my son, now, my, my son, my yeah. son, listen, yeah. listen, it is a consolation yeah. that your old man yeah. died under the British flag. Yeah. No, he, he died under a number 31 bus, in fact. <laughs> but, I mean, my mum was upset, but my uncle, right, now, he, he was in Colditz. He never was in Colditz. Yeah, he was, yeah. Well, did he escape? No, 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 he got slung off. Got slung off a cold, is that it? Well, no, because he, he couldn't remember his lines and the producer got fed up with him. So. <laughs> so he, he went and worked on uh, Emmerdale Farm, you know, and every sort of thing I've had, yeah. Well, because, you know, my, my uncle, yeah. my uncle, yeah. a very great man, a war yeah. hero, he was yeah. a navigator with oh, the RAF yeah. and he was dropped behind enemy lines. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I didn't know that they dropped navigators behind em enemy lines. <laughs> no, well, they don't normally, but a sort of plane lurched and he fell out of the bomb hatch. Oh, right. <laughs> But tell me, Miss Mother, how did you know that it wasn't Miss Forrester's body that was discovered in the drawing room? Oh, it was quite simple, really. <laughs> no woman would have to go ballroom lunch at eight o'clock, would still be in her cocktail dress at quarter past seven. Brilliant. <laughs> there we are, Inspector. You must never underestimate Miss Marvel. She has the finest criminal mind of the 20th century. But tell me, Miss Marvel, how did you know that the real Miss Forrester was planning to go ballroom dancing? Oh, Bernard told me. Who's Bernard? He's a little mouse. <laughs> Yes, yes. He talks to me while he's doing the hoovering. <laughs> you know that, uh, that, new, that new lavatory I had installed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to send it back. Oh, what was that? It had a chip in it. Oh. You could have flushed that away, I'd have thought. Yeah. Yeah. If you'd like to mull over the words of Smith & Jones at your leisure, you'll find this BBC record of selected works 